Greetings YouTube. Welcome to my first flight video for uh, Flying Circus. In this video I'll be flying the SPAD-13. This is one of my favorite aircraft in Rise of Flight, which I haven't played since around 2013-2014. I probably would have gone back to it if it had VR support, but it doesn't. And that's actually the main reason I bought uh, Flying Circus, is for VR. So let's take a look at the armament options. I'm trying to get closer so you can actually read this. It's kind of weird from my perspective. Hopefully it comes out okay on the video. So we have balloon guns. I'm not going to bring those. A pair of calimator sights. I'm going to bring the French one. Cockpit light, even though it's day. And I'll bring... Glorified hand grenades. One second timer is good. It'll be funk for a change. It's a good looking skin. What else do we have? That's hideous. I like his hubcaps. By the way, that's the old school American marking. So yeah, I'll be French. Got to bring the Colt 1911. Primary armament. Don't need those stinking Vickers. A red scarf so they can't see me bleed. And red streamer. Red checkered streamer. Let's try that. All right. I spawned park. There aren't any other aircraft, but there are ground ground targets. Okay. Quick look around. Been a long time since I flew Rise of Flight, but the textures are definitely better. No way that prop looked that good and rough. You can actually read this stuff. Couldn't do that in rough. Wood is much finer grained. Unreadable French altimeter is still unreadable. It has nothing to do with resolution. Definitely not meant to be viewed from that angle. The guns don't work. Probably has a prop in the way. Oh yeah, I remember. It's They're basically semi-automatic guns, so they only fire when the prop swings by. There we go. Quick look from outside. Yeah, looks like boss. Okay, I'm just going to take off from the taxiway. I should cut the mixture back. I think it throttles backwards. Like, it's backwards in the real aircraft. Backwards. <laughs> That's full throttle. Handles well on the ground. It's very predictable. Try not to hit a camo netting. we go. Stream, little streamer, stream. One thing I always liked about Roth is that they put in all these linkages. I don't normally see details like that. Alright, am I about to get shot down by a truck? No. That's rocket artillery. We can't kill that. Our guns are too small. Go northeast. That's the worst place for a compass. It's all awkward. By the way, that down there is the gas gauge. So that right there is RPM, this tell thing. To the right of that, that's at like 60. That's our um, water temperature, I think. That's either fuel pressure, oil pressure, this other one's probably the other. I actually don't know what that is. Obvious clock is obvious. Airspeed indicator is airspeed. It is in kilometers an hour. By the way, this plane is balling. Most of them didn't have an airspeed indicator. The super tiny cluttered writing thing is the altimeter. 
So, Mirage fans from the DCS will feel right at home with this. It's completely unreadable, so. Yeah, seems to be a common thing with the French. Why the heck is there a hammer down there? Am I Thor? Am I going to call lightning with it? It's a wooden hammer. What the hell? <laughs> An odd thing. Well, there's the uh, radiator control, and it's it's the opposite. That right there is fully closed. That's all the way open. But that's full throttle, and that's closed throttle. Whatever. Consistency, ergonomics, not major concerns in the First World War, I suspect. Alright, where are those trucks? I'm super far north. Alright. I think... Well, that's not high res. I think I'll do some wing walking since I am in VR. I wonder if autopilot works. Yep, it does. Hopefully I don't kill y'all with bumping the mic doing this. Falling flat on my face as I trip over something. And uh, you can do this in DCS, so... All the haters out there need to shut up. Because it's not any different. That is super flat. It shouldn't be. But then again, it is on the top of the wing. Viewed in a way that's really not supposed to be possible. Textures look good, though. I like it. Heh. <laughs> Goodbye. Hello, monsieur. Goodbye. Yeah, bottom wing is flat, too, but... I have to draw the line at number of polys somewhere. It makes sense. It just... I don't know. I was hoping there'd be more. Alright, find that chair again. And my cable is all screwed up. I need to make these things wireless. I'm going the wrong direction. That is not at all helpful. Okay. Speed this along and I'll blow something up for you. And then I'll attempt a landing. I might try landing in a field. Should work. See, graphically, the little vent thing up there to the lower right of the gun, I can see the sharp edges. It's not bad, but it's there. Gun is reasonably round. Gun side is super rounded. I can see the flat lines, but that's like DCS level round. Top of the engine, yeah, it's kind of squarish, but it's not bad. Overall, I think they did a good job with the textures. 3D models, I mean, I'm assuming they're improved, but they're not DCS level. They're good, they're just not DCS level, but DCS has gone kind of crazy with them. A lot of people complain about performance because of that. You can see right here, I've got, like, more or less locked to 90 FPS. I do not get that in DCS at this altitude. Though it's for different reasons. It's, in DCS, it's all CPU bound. Whereas here, it's... You tend to run out of 8700K at about the same time you run out of the 1080Ti. So, it's reasonably balanced. Multi-threading would help, though. Especially with the new generation graphics cards coming soon. Boom. By the way, the SPAD was um, the World War I equivalent of like an FW-190 or a P-47. Very fast, 
A uh, good diver, but not very agile. At least at low speed. But even so, compared to a World War II fighter, it's incredibly nimble. This thing would easily outturn an I-16. Though uh, an I-16 has about twice the top speed. So, there is that. I may do a DR-1 video after this. I think I'll shoot this last guy and then go land for you. Assuming I don't hit a tree. Can't do that in a 190. Although you can smack the ground trying to shoot something like that. Good rudder. Okay, let's go land this thing. There it is. So yeah, my overall first thoughts of this are it's Rise of Flight and uh, IL-2 Boss, and I don't think that's a bad thing. But, um, yeah, that, that's pretty much all there is to say. It's, uh, it's Rise of Flight and Boss, and textures are, have been improved. I assume 3D models have been improved. It's been a little too long for me to tell. Um, flight models feel the same, but they said they would be the same. And they were always quite good. There's nothing wrong with them. Um, I think once we get some more content in, uh, I'll be quite happy with it. Hopefully they get the uh, original Rise of Flight campaign in, because that thing was a masterpiece. They've sort of turned it into the uh, career for the World War II stuff. So it'd be nice to have that back for World War I. That is stable. I did not flare enough. Nope, don't do that. Yeah. Well, whatever. Didn't hurt anything. Uh, I guess that's it. I will see you in the next video.